What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Now Roscoe Dash grew up in Atlanta with his brother, mother and grandmother. From an early age, he was fascinated with hip hop and at the age of 12, he began rapping and writing out rhymes to perform. He, along with his older brother and aspiring producer, formed a four-man rap group with two of their friends from school. The group named themselves B.O.B., a moniker that stood out for Black Out Boys. His first stage name was ATL, but switched names as time went on. Black Out Boys performed relatively well in Atlanta and gained quite a significant buzz in Atlanta. However, like most groups, one member eventually decided to go solo. Roscoe Dash parted ways with the group, and unfortunately the group never made it big. Nonetheless, Roscoe, at the time going by the name Shadow Fade and sporting a strange signature mohawk, decided to completely revamp his persona. He made some mixtapes in his basement and browsed old superheroes in the hopes of finding an alter ego more to his liking. According to him, while browsing he came up with a superhero-esque name, Roscoe Dash. From then on, Shadow Fade was no more, and Dash was born. I have all the swag, body bag, life's a fucking party, I'm wasted, someone call the cab. I needed something more marketable. I felt Shadow Fade would have given my secret identity away. Plus it put me in that box of an Atlanta rapper, so I needed something that would catch the ears and eyes of whoever was listening or reading the name Roscoe Dash and make them want to do research on Roscoe Dash. While networking to further his career, Roscoe reconnected with old high school friends through his cousin Tori Y.T. Hood. The old high school friends had formed a rap trio by the name Travis Porter, and Tori was their sponsor. After hearing an early version of All The Way Turned Up, the trio agreed to a collaboration with Dash. They then went on to do a re-recording of Roscoe's track, this time featuring Travis Porter. Dash released the track as a single around 2009, while Travis Porter placed the song on their I'm a Differenter mixtape, which was released around that same time period. Unfortunately, troubles arose when Porter listed the song as theirs and featuring Dash rather than the other way around. Roscoe Dash naturally took offense to this and the two acts fell out, although the group clarified that it was a mistake on their part. Despite this, the group continued to perform the song without Roscoe at gigs and did not correct the credits on the mixtape. Roscoe continued to play the song at clubs and received an incredibly positive response from club goers. This led to him being discovered by successful entrepreneur LA the Boom Man, which led to a later signing with his production company, Making Moves Inc. But we turned up record. You know what I'm saying? So, wait a minute. First, first, before I even get started, I'm gonna go ahead and say I fuck with Travis Porter the long way, the extra strong way. And I'm gonna go ahead and admit that if it wasn't for these niggas, I probably wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in right now. You feel what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't even be getting hurt. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it all the way funky with y'all. You know what I'm saying? But, um, let me go ahead and break this situation down to y'all so that everybody understand. Um, a couple months back, probably about. Beginning of the year, you know what I'm saying? I went and recorded all the way turned up by myself with, with the open verses, you know what I'm saying, at Arrogant Music Studios, you know what I'm saying? Do your homework. We got the motherfucking session, we got all that shit proof. You feel me? Alright. So um took the record. Uh my cousin actually was an investor in uh in Travis Porter's group, which is how I met them. You feel what I mean? And um we was on the way to the club one day, and Strap was in the back seat, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I let him hear that all the way turned up shit and he was like, I gotta get on it. Like cool, you know what I'm saying? Next week, probably a week or two after that, we went and recorded the song. I felt like after a while, um, once the song was released on the I'm a different the two, you know what I'm saying? It was it was some extra shit that was going on, which I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna speak on, you know what I'm saying? But I felt like I was being done unfairly, you know what I'm saying? It was uh, it was basically like I was being pushed in the in the in the in the shadows of the song, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't getting my shot and I'm the one who wrote the song. You feel me? Like they just put verses on the song. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm keeping it all the way funky with y'all. They just put verses on the song. I recorded the song all the way turned up. That's me. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that. that's me by myself. You feel what I mean? Like, and, and I really feel like people only listen to the hook 
And, and you said like they, they only listen to the catchy part of the song. Like, I'm gonna keep it all the way fucking with y'all. People only listen to the hook of the song. That's what's sticking niggas' head. Who's on the hook? Whose song is it? You feel what I'm saying? Like, think about the shit. It was pushed on their album. You know what I'm saying? And when it was on their album, when it was on their uh, they mixtape, it was uh, it was put out as Travis Porter featuring ATL. Cause that was what I, that's what my name was before I changed it to Roscoe Dash. You feel what I mean? And um, ever since then, it's been all over YouTube. It's been all over Twitter. It's been all over their Facebook. And you know what I'm saying? As Travis Porter, it's, most of the time it don't even say featuring Roscoe Dash. It don't even say nothing about Roscoe Dash. So how would niggas know? You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Boom Man and then introduced Roscoe to an A&R rep, Anthony Tate, who in turn introduced him to producer and label founder Polo Da Don. By the time he had met all these men, Dash had signings with the music line group, Interscope, and Zone 4. Hyped off his signings, Roscoe then re-recorded the track all the way turned up once again, this time featuring Soldier Boy, who had been incredibly vocal on Twitter about wanting to get on the track. He also immediately got to work on his official debut album to be titled Ready Set Go. Planned featured artists include Jeezy, Chris Brown and Soldier Boy, but things seemed to go array right from the beginning. The album was supposed to come out in May, but was pushed back to June and then November. Nonetheless, Dash released his official studio single around 2010 in the form of All The Way Turned Up. The song immediately got people wondering about Roscoe, landing impressively at number 46 on the Billboard Hot 100. Roscoe Dash's sound was different, which made people want to learn more about the upcoming rapper. The definition of all the way turned up is a new age crunk, a 2010 crunk. I'm not afraid to be different or do things other people would be afraid to do or do different because they're afraid of what somebody else might say. I don't have that thought process. After releasing all the way turned up, Roscoe Dash followed it up with another single titled Show Out. This one was not as successful as its predecessor. Now this is where things get a bit sticky for our boy Dash. As I mentioned earlier, Ready Set Go was continually delayed. It was supposed to come out around 2010, but consistent delays in music meant that the release date was pushed back to early June and then early November. Unfortunately, before Roscoe Dash managed to complete the album, it was leaked. The only problem is, the version that was leaked did not contain the promised collaboration with Chris Brown, nor did it feature the singles Pop a Bottle with Young Jeezy or Elevator Love with Jasmine Sullivan. Now the leaked version was then released as the final version on its planned November release date. Regardless, the album managed to make some waves, and the single Sexy Girl Anthem, which wasn't even released as a single, managed to place on a chart. Refusing to let his frustrations get to him, Dash continued to work on his music and drop mixtapes for his fans. Around 2010, he dropped about two tapes titled Can't Catch the Lambo and Demolition 2020, while 2011 brought his fans Dash Effect. Now around 2010, Roscoe Dash became more recognizable when he made a song with Waka Flocka Flame titled No Hands. The song was an absolute smash and eventually went on to be certified three times platinum. Following No Hands, Dash got to feature in another successful single, this time with Kanye West and Big Sean on the latter's 2011 hit Marvin and Chardonnay. While smashing out these singles, Dash was also working on his next solo attempt, his EP, Juice. The title stands for Just Understand I Control Everything and following the messy drama surrounding his debut album, Dash disowned it and now considers his EP as his first album. Two singles were released from the album titled Good Good Night and Into the Morning. Around 2012, Roscoe featured on the cover of Double XL alongside the likes of Iggy Azalea, Future, French Montana, and Machine Gun Kelly. This was a highlight in his career and set the year off positively for the boy. He released another two projects around this time period, one called Cleaning Out My Closet and another called 2.0.
2012 was a very interesting year for Roscoe Dash. He entered the world of rap controversy for the first time over several ghostwriting claims on Twitter. Roscoe Dash took aim at Kanye West for failing to acknowledge him and give him credits on the song To The World, which appeared on the Good Music compilation album Cruel Summer. The tweets read, Everybody go get the good album and listen to number one, then watch at Kanye West interview and tell me why I'm not on the credits. In the offending interview, Kanye explained that it was a communal style of work in which many artists expressed their opinions towards each song. He went on to shout out several of the artists but failed to mention Roscoe Dash. Clearly upset by this, Dash called out Wale and his smash single Lotus Flower Bomb for essentially the same thing. They just try to live in a fantasy. I feel it when you dance with me. Same shit with Wale, Lotus Flower Bomb. I wrote that for him before he even signed to Ross and it went number one. But nobody would know that because I'm not in the credits. Can't do favors for n because no matter how humble and generous you are to people, will take everything you have, even you look up to. The most talented people get the least credit for everything and the crazy part is they put in the most work, but everything must eventually come to the light. I'm only speaking on this publicly because there are so many people who want to be a part of the industry but don't know half of the shit that goes on. Following the second tirade, Roscoe backtracked and said the following. After getting off the phone with Wale, I feel like I need to clarify, I wrote the hook for Lotus Flower Bomb, not his verses. However, the record went number one and I wasn't credited. Now as far as going at Kanye goes, Roscoe had no regrets. And as far as Kanye West to the world, if you listen close my ad libs are still in the song. This should have been where the interaction ended. However, a few days later, Miguel shaded Dash in an interview and our boy simply could not take that lying down. Miguel said, As far as I know, Wale and another artist that I recently met penned the original Lotus Flower Bomb chorus and I came in and I added the second half or the end part. I'm not going to explain myself. This is retarded. I don't know anything about Roscoe Dash. At the end of the day, I know my involvement in the song and as far as I know, Wale and I and this other guy wrote the chorus. The other guy was an alternative artist. I think anyone that wants to know who wrote the song can check the credits. I don't know. I don't really care. If he did write part of it, then he should get credit for it. In response, he called Miguel out for initially being a fan and essentially being a cornball. So I just met you at the ASCAP Awards. Your first five words to me were, "Oh man, I'm a huge fan. But now? At Miguel Unlimited, you want to go to the blogs and get in some shit you have nothing to do with and say you don't know anything about Roscoe Dash, you're a cornball. At Miguel Unlimited, stay out of grown people's business with your 206k followers, Twitter that. He then provided his proof to the Twitterverse with tweets and accompanying screenshots of the reference tracks on iTunes. To the world, the reference and instrumental I was given to write for Kanye West. The original Lotus Flower Bomb when it was called Fantasy. Roscoe Dash was going all in. He then took shots at Meek Mill for commenting on the situation despite not having a part in it. Meek Mill tweeted, Yo at Roscoe Dash, you must not be getting no money B. LOL. In response, Roscoe tweeted the following alongside a screenshot of a Facebook interaction that the pair had had earlier in the year. Roscoe then responded to Meek Mill by saying the following, Your favorite street Meek Mill a couple of months ago after our altercation. The pair kept going back and forth on Twitter with Meek Mill saying, Yo, I was just bidding off, you nut ass. LOL at Roscoe Dash, you're a weirdo. You really be on Facebook? Your page hacked the awards next week. LOL, I quit. Yo at Roscoe Dash, but I don't want no problems. I was just bidding off, you not ass, for opening your mouth last time. LOL. Unfortunately for Meek, it was too late and Roscoe closed off his arguments with one final tweet and the link to his latest mixtape. Save your apologies, I'm off this shit. Good night, world. Hashtag 2.0. 
Following his irritation with ghostwriting, Roscoe turned slightly away from music. He went on to drop a couple of mixtapes here and there, but by 2017, a lot of people assumed that he had hit rock bottom. At the time, people thought he was driving for Lyft. Apparently, Roscoe Dash was supposed to pick someone up using his Lyft service, but cancelled the ride at the last minute. This Roscoe Dash cancelled my Lyft and I had somewhere to be. So you're just gonna inconvenience me? I'ma expose you a Lyft driver now. Now how did Roscoe Dash respond to these claims? He went on Twitter once again. Earlier today, it was brought to my attention that a Twitter user tweeted out a root screenshot from a Lyft fare which included a picture of myself and a white Tahoe. First things first, yes, that is my vehicle, yes, that is me in the photo, there is no denying that. Why would I? However, I do not drive Lyft. I own several vehicles and periodically I lend them to my close friends so they are able to make a little extra cash. Now apart from driving for Lyft, nowadays Roscoe Dash is incredibly private. He has a family and was said to be married around 2018. Hey, what it do, what it do, man? It's your boy Roscoe Dash. The first thing that I want to say, aside from, check out my fade. All right, you did a great job. This is what I look like now, y'all. Wiki, I need y'all to get it together, okay? Wikipedia, y'all supposed to be the source. Y'all the first thing to pop up on Google. Y'all can't be telling folks I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, Wyoming, or whatever. No shade, but it's a privilege and an honor to be from the home of the brave, the place where people like Outkast, Lil John and the East Side Boys, Ludacris, T.I., you name it, Gucci Man, Shawty Lowe. Don't take that away from me, man. I worked hard for that. 27 years, I'm a native. Now, let's get to what y'all really want to talk about. You know what y'all probably thinking? Does Roscoe drive Lyft? Is this not the same white Tahoe that is circulating all around the internet? Is that not a Lyft sticker on the same Tahoe that is circulating around the internet right now? The answer is yes. Now, this is one of my vehicles. For those of y'all who don't know me, I have children. Can't fit too many kids in a coupe. Okay, this is one of my cars. When I'm not using it, when I'm not traveling or doing whatever I'm doing with it, I allow people, friends, family, whatever, to come and use the car for whatever reasons, whether that be partying, transportation, transportation services, making some little extra money, whatever the case may be. So I'll let y'all put two and two together with that. Now, what I do want to say is, is that as a successful entrepreneur, one thing that I've learned is it's important to humble yourself. We learned that from Kendrick, we learned that from LeBron James. LeBron James. But furthermore, as an entrepreneur, it's important to have multiple sources of income. And I'm pretty sure people like OBJ, DJ Khaled, Shaq, I don't know, you tell me. But they would agree that Lyft is no exception to creating multiple sources of income. He has continued to release music sporadically throughout his career, with his latest offering being the 2021 single, Yes I Can. His music style has changed completely since his new age crunk days, and his lyrics have improved significantly. This year, he went on the Demolition 2022 tour, but hasn't been up to much since. In essence, Roscoe Dash's career came and went. He dropped a hot song a long time ago and did some amazing features, but as of right now, he isn't very active in the music industry. I personally think that the reason that Roscoe Dash was not able to pick up the mic again was because he had no hands. Roscoe Dash gets about 270,000 monthly listeners on Spotify and his most popular songs on the platform are All The Way Turned Up, Good Good Night, Show Out, Sexy Girl Anthem, and My Girl Nice. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Roscoe Dash in your opinion? Let me know it down below. Video requests, be sure to let me know down below as well. You what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.